Hello friends, myself Dr. Subhas Misra. Today I am talking about a very important staining technique that is used in bacteriological laboratory for the classification and characterization of bacteria. So kindly watch this video and update your knowledge. During this video, I have tried to explain why gram staining is very important and widely used in microbiological laboratory. What is the requirements of gram stain? Principal procedure results in very detail and in very simple way. When we talk about gram stain, then this stain is given by a bacteriologist Hans Christian Gram in 1884. As I told earlier, this is widely used for the characterization and uh, classification of bacteria in laboratory. When we discuss about the principle of gram stain, what is the exact mechanism of gram stain is poorly understood. There is no any exact mechanism. But several theory has been given to understand the principle of gram stain and uh, entire all important theory, I would like to explain two important theory which is widely used that is number one PS theory. What is PS theory? In PS theory, told that gram positive cells have a more acidic protoplasm which may account for their retaining the primary basic dye more strongly than gram negative bacteria. What does it mean? When we discuss about gram positive and gram negative bacteria, gram positive bacteria protoplasm have more acid concentration. This is very important point. When we discuss about gram positive and gram negative bacteria, Inside the protoplasm of the gram positive bacteria, the concentration of acid is more and due to high concentration, they retain the color, they retain the primary stain. In the procedure, I will discuss about several stains are used in gram stain. The number one stain that is called primary stain in which we will discuss or we will use like a Jensen violet, like crystal violet. So, when we use crystal violet, they are basically basic strain, they are basic dye and protoplasma of gram positive bacteria have acidic concentration is more. So, they hold the dye, they hold the color, they retain the color. But when we discuss about gram negative bacteria, the concentration of acid is less. Say, due to that, they do not hold the color, they do not retain the color. The sick, when we see the protoplasm of gram positive bacteria are more ticoic acid, more lipotricoic acid, but when we see the protoplasm of gram negative bacteria, they having the concentration of acid is very less. When we see the other theory and very important and very acceptable theory, that is what? That is cell wall theory. When we see the cell wall theory, the two important words which is very important here that is peptidoglycan and high lipid content. What is written here? The peptidoglycan of gram positive bacteria is thick and thus able to retain the iodine dye complex. Means when we see the gram positive bacteria, gram positive bacteria and when we see the gram negative bacteria in gram-positive bacteria, the concentration of peptidoglycan is high and due to that, they hold the color, they hold the primary stain. But when we see the gram-negative bacteria, the concentration of peptidoglycan is less but the concentration of lipid is high. And as we note that, lipid can be dissolved in acetone or alcohol and in gram stain, we use acetone alcohol as a declarizer. So, they do not hold the color, they do not retain the color. So, gram, there is a two words which you have to remember for a long time that is what gram positive, P means positive, P means peptidoglycan. Gram positive bacteria having more peptidoglycan, gram negative bacteria having less peptidoglycan but more lipid content. In the graph or in the diagram, before that I will see. Here, the gram positive bacteria having more peptidoglycan, but gram negative bacteria having less peptidoglycan. 
and due to more concentration of peptidoglycan they hold the color but due to the lipid concentration in gram negative bacteria is what high in the procedure we will discuss we are using acetone as a declarizer and we are using when acetone as a declarizer due to that the they do not retain the color see there is other difference also present in gram negative and gram positive bacteria the number one when we see the cell wall of the gram positive bacteria they are more thick and they having 15 to 18 nanometer while in gram negative bacteria they are 2 nanometer when you see the lipid content as i told earlier the gram positive bacteria having lipid content is what less but gram negative bacteria having lipid content is high apart from lipid content ticoic acid i told earlier present in gram positive bacteria not present in gram negative bacteria variety of amino acids are present in gram negative bacteria but they are very less number present in gram positive bacteria aromatic amino acids are present in gram negative bacteria they are not present in gram positive bacteria as i know that they are also work as a what endotoxins gram negative bacteria works as a endotoxins but gram positive bacteria are not works as a endotoxins sulfur containing amino acids are present in gram negative bacteria but they are not present in gram positive bacteria when we see the treatment with lysozyme they having protoplast in gram positive they are having spheroplast but what is the major and important differences entire all difference you have to remember only two things what number one that is peptidoglycan peptidoglycan in gram positive bacteria peptidoglycan is high in gram negative bacteria peptidoglycan is less and another that is what lipid content in gram positive bacteria lipid content is less in gram positive bacteria lipid content is what high so these are the two important points which you have to remember for a long time apart from this when we discuss about what is the procedure of gram staining then we will see in a very simplest way i have explained all the steps first of all you have to take a clean glass light you have to make the smear round or oval round or oval smear after that you have to dry the smear after drying the smear you have to fix the smear by what by flame over a flame or through the cold methanol you are using flame also and you are using cold methanol for fixation of smear with the slide now the staining procedure starts as i told in the starting of my video what will be the requirements the requirements will be different different type of stains the number one stain which will use that is what crystal violet or methyl violet or jensen violet first of all we use crystal violet it is called primary stain and after that we have to use iodine solution and these iodine solution used as a mordant they make a complex structure after that declarization is used like ethanol or acetone or enolate this ethanol acetone or enolate used as a declarizer they are basically organic solvent and after that we will use the final stain that is carbophosphin or safranin or neutral weight they are basically counter stain counter stain actually <laughs> in entire staining technique we use four things one is crystal violet second is gram iodine and third is what acetone or ethanol or aldehyde and four is what carbophosphin safranin or neutral weight what will happen see when we see here then we have make a slide and slide is fixed by the heat fix that has been done then crystal violet cover the slide with crystal violet they are primary stain and here gram iodine used as a mordant and after that alcohol has been used 95% as a declarizer and safranin has been used 
and the result which we get that gram positive bacteria are purple in color and gram negative bacteria are red in color but what happened during a staining which is very important in the beginning of my presentation i discussed that the gram positive bacteria having more peptidoglycan due to that they hold the color of crystal violet they retain the color of crystal violet they do not lose the color by using of dechlorizer but while when we discuss about gram negative bacteria they are less peptidoglycan they having more lipid content that's why what happened the they do not hold the color they loses the color and they get colored by counter stain that is saffroning and they become red it's a very simple one having more peptidoglycan that's why they hold the color one having less peptidoglycan and more pep more lipids that's why lipids are dissolved in the alcohol that's why they loses the color and they get colored by the saffronin and they having red in color but when we talk about uh, these are these are the steps fixation is done by like heat fixation or methanol like second crystal violet third one you use iodine as a mordant then dechlorizer alcohol or acetone and counter stain is done by the saffronin these are the gram positive bacteria which having purple in color and they are gram negative bacteria they are red in color when we see the results then gram as i told earlier the gram positive bacteria are violet in color because they hold the color of number 1 that is primary stain and when we discuss about the gram negative bacteria they are red in color because they loses the primary stain by the when we use the dechlorizer and they catch or they hold the last which we used the saffronin and the counter stain they get colored by the counter stain and they become red in color so gram positive are violet and gram negative are red in color due to the presence of high peptidoglycan and due to the presence of high lipid and less peptidoglycan which is very important these are the gram positive bacteria like staphylococcus aureus streptococcus pneumoniae clostridium botulinum pseudomonas aeruginosa bacillus these are the bacteria which are gram positive but when we see the gram negative bacteria like e coli neisseria meningitis the number one bacteria which you have to remember for a long time that e coli is a gram negative but when we talk about staphylococcus streptococcus they are gram positive when we see the applications of this gram stain then this technique is used for the several purposes one classification and characterization of bacteria second growth requirement third susceptibility of to antibiotics and fourth pathogenicity when we see the pathogenicity several bacteria having different types of pathogenesis they produces infections in the different way so to understand the pathogenicity in the laboratory we use gram staining techniques several bacteria having resistance to the several antibiotics to understand that we are using a staining technique gram staining technique to understand the antibiotic susceptibility in the laboratory several bacteria having several types of growth requirements so to understand the requirement we use such type of staining technique in the laboratory in a very simple way i have tried to explain this complete gram staining technique i hope you understand that if you understand then kindly like this video and subscribe the channel and share with your friends thank you so much